this Sunday, we are doing something fun. What we are talking about when we talk about fun is we are going to look back at right before the release of the season, back when we made our spreadsheets of sims, of simulations, what we expected each of the specs results to be, whether it was in single target or in AOE, to try to get an idea of how powerful specs were before the, before the release. And this time we are focusing on the hero talents. We're going to be comparing exactly how many players are playing each and every different hero talent. How many of the hero talents are currently dead, how many of the hero talents are currently in need of help, as well as how many of the specs currently do have a good spread, a good choice between hero talents. Whether it is a very divisive split, like I play this hero talent in Mythic Plus and then this hero talent in the raid, or if it is more of a 50-50 in both situations, etc, etc. So, talking about splits, we start not on a to good note because we start with Frost Death Knight. And as you can see, when we talk about Frost Death Knight, both in Mythic Plus and in the raid, the result is practically the same. This is, you know, Mythic Plus results of Frost DK and the hero talent starts with Deathbringer. And they all start with Deathbringer in Mythic Plus. We can move over to the raid results and it could be the same thing, 95% and then more, 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 more are playing Deathbringer and only a 1.3% are playing with Horseman's Hero Talent. And even then, as quite visible, their DPS is still significantly lower than the results of Deathbringer. So, first in line, Frost DK, definitely a dead option for hero talent, with the alternative being Rider of the Apocalypse. Now, when you move over to Unholy Death Knight, we have kind of the opposite, because both in Mythic Plus and in the raid, if we switch over to Unholy, this time the advantage goes almost entirely to Ryder, which was previously, you know, dead for Frost DK. So I guess I guess it's good that at least between the same class and the two different DPS specs, you can play both, except you have to change the entire spec if you want to play the two. So in the case of Frost, it's Ryder that is not being taken at all. In the case of Unholy, it is Sun Lane that is not being taken at all. And then in the case of Blood, we are back again favoring Deathbringer. This time Deathbringer is for again both Mythic Plus and the raid taken by Blood Death Knight. We have a whooping 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.05% total of players going for Sun Lane. When it comes to the raid for example, Mythic Plus is equally bad for DK. So when it comes to DK there is no alternative whatsoever. It's either Deathbringer played exclusively by Blood and Frost as well as Rider played exclusively by Unholy. Now this one already paints the picture when it comes to Havoc, 100% playing Fels card in raid. And then, you know, 99.4% playing Fels card in Mythic Plus. We can see the same treatment here in the rankings of Mythic Plus, and this is, you know, just Fels card over and over and over when it comes to Havoc Demon Hunter. This is interesting because for a long time, looking at the results, Fels card and Aldrichi River were quite close. When we looked at the AOE damage, it was Fels card that was slightly ahead. After a series of buffs, Fels card became stronger and stronger. And turns out that Aldrichi River is also just too clunky and too annoying to play properly, so Demon Hunter just defaulted back to playing with Fels card. Now, if we move over to Vengeance, there is slightly more competition. This is Mythic Plus, where Aldrichi River gets to a whooping 7.5%, and even 12.2% even in the raid when it comes to the option of Vengeance. Looking here from, well, Meta, you can see here the, the Aldrichi River having, you know, 11.5 in the, in the highest played build, and then another 2.1 over here, 0.7 over here. So you know, at least there is some, some play. This is the, for now, the most popular second most played hero talent that we've seen so far, getting to 12 to 13% in the raid, which is still, you know, we're still talking something very low, not, not really a powerful option. Maybe we can find something better when looking at druids, starting with balance, and that's not a good look, because I see here 99.7% of balanced druids playing Keeper of the Grove over Elunas Chosen. And then when you switch over to Mythic Plus though, we have almost 30% 
of Balanced Druids playing with Elunus Chosen. Now, can we finally start seeing some variety in here? Well, look at this. There is one guy playing Elunus Chosen. There is two players. You know, there is three. There is four. We start seeing some more of these changes in the hero talents being played. We're talking about high keys here, or at least high keys for a balanced druid right now it does definitely have slightly more options when it comes to mythic plus and to just aoe damage in general with elunus elunus chosen build however it's still barely more than a third played compared to keeper of the grub and still completely dead in the raid so we're not talking about something very competitive right now moving down feral moving down feral you do have 16 percent of wild stalker being played in mythic plus and this is where we finally see our first switcheroo because if we start from mythic plus of of a feral druid which is you know not you know not doing too well right now but if you look at the hero talents results of a feral druid you do see already in the most played ones you have you start off an, an almost 80 percent for druid of the claw already in the most popular one but then you know down below it's practically all just well stalker racking up to about 16 percent total but then you move from the mythic plus results to the raid results of feral which again still not not that great but the hero talent switches around now there is a much higher percentage of well stalker compared to druid of the claw so it is our first true and real actually viable double hero talent and we find it in feral which is perhaps not great considering feral is not you know doing that well right now after them you have guardian guardian follows suit in this pattern perhaps more important than feral because guardian is actually a good spec right now so you have inmity class again completely dead unfortunately when it comes to Druid of the claw almost exclusively elunus chosen but then in the raid they play more with Druid of the claw Again, this is not too relevant because it's a tank, like, you know, the hero talent of the tank in the raid, it's like, you know, who, who cares, right? Especially Elunus chosen for Guardian is mostly for AoE damage and self-healing in Mythic Plus is not that relevant for, you know, bosses in the raid, so... It's more understandable that Druid of the Claw would be played more in the raid. Now, when it comes to Resto Druid, Resto Druid was one of the specs where we assumed that Keeper of the Grove looked like a very good raid spec because it was like, well, it's three ends, you know, it's more, it's more raid healing, passive healing with your three ends. So when you go over to the raid results and you check the hero talents, you know, there you go. This is three ends, you know, 95 plus percent, it's expected. And then we thought initially, you know, in Mythic Plus, while Stalker helps with more free hots, free dots, passive damage as well in Mythic Plus for a for a for a healer, which can be very good. So that was the idea initially for the hero talent. It's it is more divisive now, but it's not nearly the same advantage we expected in Mythic Plus because while Stalker is you know 50-50 with Keeper of the Grove. It's not dominating the play rate right now in mythic plus it's definitely competitive for now but not nearly the same victory we would have thought when talking about wild stalker rest of the ruin in mythic plus now moving over to augmentation augmentation actually is the for now the best balanced of the specs we have seen because it has a 50 50 between chrono warden and scale commander in mythic plus and then 70 30 more or less chrono warden and scale commander in the raid so for now, Augmentation does have the best balance across the two hero talents. Devastation, we cannot say the same, almost 100% exclusively for Skell Commander in the raid, and almost 100% exclusively for Skell Commander in Mythic Class. Funnily enough, the hero talent that is losing heavily for Devastation is Flame Shaper, which is something you might have gotten to see recently inside the race to world first because Preservation Evoker, while having almost 100% of play rate of Chrono Warden in Mythic Plus, does have almost the opposite in the raid with 97 something percent for Flame Shaper. We have made an entire video about what makes Flame Shaper very good in the raid and not nearly as good in Mythic Plus. However, we can still chuck it down to a surprise because even in the beta results, no, no Evoker was playing with Flame Shaper when healing. Flame Shaper wasn't really considered much. But they definitely had a, a turnover in this, uh, in this beginning of the tier when it comes to raid power of this hero talent. 
Now, moving over to Hunter. Well, this is why perhaps the anniversary patch coming in a few weeks will have quite a few changes to the hero talents of Hunter because Pack Leader is practically unplayable for Beast Mastery Hunter. Barely gets to 10% when it comes to Mythic Plus, but exclusively Dark Ranger is being played in the raid. You move over to Marksmanship Hunter and things again similar. Sentinel is the absolutely most taken hero talent when it comes to Mythic Plus. And then in the raid, you have slightly more Dark Rangers, but still most of the results, especially the performance, the DPS is still above for, for Dark Ranger. And then even worse, for survival where you don't even get to see the alternative to sentinel in the raid and you also don't get to see the alternative to sentinel in mythic plus and that's because all of the survival hunters are playing sentinel right now now mage can be an interesting one because they have flip-flopped quite a lot you know arcane frost and even fire across the weeks of the beta they have gotten buffs and nerfs and buffs and nerfs to their hero talent they were flip-flopping back and forth between picking one of these hero talents well arcane mage right now is uh, playing almost exclusively sun fury yes we kind of knew about this after spellslinger was nerfed a lot in the beta but then we move over to fire and fire is uh, also playing exclusively sun fury and then we move over to frost and frost is exclusively playing spellslinger so the TLDR across all of this is that Frostfire is garbage and that nobody is bothering to playing with Frostfire. The other stick with Sun Fury, which was buffed after Spellslinger was nerfed, but then Frost stuck with Spellslinger because Spellslinger was buffed multiple times for Frost only, making it the best option for Frost. So we can say as a whole, in terms of variety, Mage is the worst class right now. They have by far the least choices in their hero talents. Now we don't start too well when talking about Windwalker because Shadowpan is practically replicating the dominance of the mage hero talents because it's at 97 and 98 percent when it comes to mythic plus and the raid now the funny thing about the two is that unlike the other hero talents we have seen their results are actually quite close you know if we go back to mage for example and check arcane and check the difference between some fury and spell slinger and their average damage you kind of understand why players are playing some fury but then when you move back to Monk, you're like, well, this is, you know, this, these differences are like less than 5% between the two. So it's mostly a matter of preference and or ease of use that more Windwalkers are going for Shadowpan over going for Conduit of the Celestials. Not the same for Brewmaster, where again, they play Shadowpan exclusively over Master of Harmony. Then we have the inverse of Windwalker, because for Mistweaver, it is Conduit of the Celestials, the one that is being played the most, the one that Windwalkers are not playing. So in the end, while Mistweaver is the reverse of Windwalker, they do one thing just the same as Brewmaster, which is not playing Master of Harmony whatsoever. Now, moving over to Paladin. Paladin is pretty interesting because Rhett, right now, Rhett right now is doing good, perhaps surprisingly good. If you're looking at the results in BT Plus, they are doing quite well. Even by different rankings, different sites, Rhett is still doing well in BT Plus. Even if we go, go over to the raid, Rhett is not doing bad whatsoever. They are all playing Herald of the Sun in BT Plus, and they are still all playing Herald of the Sun in the raid. Herald of the Sun has been buffed for Red Paladin, Templar has been slightly nerfed, many Reds don't enjoy too much having to have a 5 holy power spender or enabler when playing with Templar, so they are all defaulting just to playing with Herald of the Sun. For Prot, we have um, slightly more option between Lysmith and Templar, right? It's still very poor in the raid, where they are all playing mostly playing Templar, but over in Mythic Plus, Lysmith does have more room to play. Although the current state of Prot Paladin in Mythic Plus, you know, is not too exciting, even if you have slightly more options when it comes to your hero talents. Where you have much fewer options is back in Holy Paladin, almost 100% Herald of the Sun results in Mythic Plus, as then in the raid, even more results of Herald of the Sun. So we are still, for now, very rarely seeing two hero talents being actually very, very viable. Even if, even if, even if it was for just a split, you know, one being using the raid, one being using Mythic Plus, we're not even seeing that for pretty much almost every one of these specs. The trend seems to continue. 
for Shadow, because Shadow is dropping Void Weaver. Well, Shadow is also not doing too great right now, but in general, between the raid and with the class, Shadow Priest does have the buffs given to Archon over time and the nerfs given to Void Weaver over time, eventually, eventually taking taking hold on them and they dropped Void Weaver altogether. This cannot be said the same for Discipline because it's the reverse. Now it's Void Weaver that is played 100% of the times and Oracle never played. Oracle has been, for Discipline, buffed multiple times over and over and over and Void Weaver nerfed multiple times over and over and over. I also had my prediction, which in Mythic Raiding Oracle would have been the, the hero talent being played for Discipline. Turns out neither of the hero talents are being played because nobody is playing Discipline in, in Mythic Raiding. Where we go back to having some semblance of variety, however, is in Holy Priest. Because Holy Priest does have almost 40% of the specs playing Archon in Mythic Plus and then in the raid it's almost exclusively Archon. But at the very least you do have some, some option because you do have one of the few specs with a split. You have an advantage for Oracle in Mythic Plus and then a, a, a massive advantage of Archon in the raid. One of the few specs with some options in variety is Holy Priest. We can quite quickly skip past Rogue because because Assassination is playing Death Stalker, no matter the situation, it's just Death Stalker. Then you move to Outlaw, and Outlaw is playing Fatebound, no matter the situation, and Subtlety is playing Trickster, no matter the situation. Now, at the very least, we said this. When we talked about the powerful specs, the one with the better result, we said, well, if there is one cool thing about the rogues is that each of those three is playing a different hero talent. Or rather, you know, in the simulations, technically, three different hero talents would have been the best for the three different specs. So for now, this has been true. For now, the three different specs are alternating their most played hero talent. So at least there is that. They're still not viable between the same spec, but across the whole class, you do get to play all three of the available hero talents. Now over to Shaman. Shaman has also been the source of many changes to their hero talents across the weeks of the beta. When it comes to Elemental, our initial prediction was single target is Farseer, but then when you move over to AoE, the result is Stormbringer, right? That was the call for Elemental. So 100% of the Elementals in the raid are playing Farseer, and then 84% of Elementals are playing Stormbringer in Mythic Plus. So, more or less, this has followed the predictions. The predictions for enhancement weren't this split whatsoever. The predictions for enhancement were the only viable spec is Stormbringer. Totemic is a meme. So, is it a meme for enhancement? Uh, turns out it is. So, again, respecting the predictions. Lastly, we had Resto Shaman. We had no, no sims for Resto Shaman, but the, the prediction for the spec as a whole was Totemic is for the raid and Farseer is for Mythic Plus. Now, when it, comes to, when it comes to the raid, this kept the predictions, of course. Totemic was the strongest, still is the strongest in the raid, but in Mythic Plus, that's not the case, because in Mythic Plus, still, Totemic is by far the most played over Farseer. There are some voices in the corridors that eventually Resto Shaman at very high keys might see Farseer becoming more powerful again because of their power in single target healing over Totemic, but we are not there yet. So for now, there is still not a lot of variety for Resto Shaman in both of the hero talents. Now the next are Warlocks. The predictions for Warlocks were similar initially to Rogue because we had Soul Harvester being the better one for Affliction and then Diabolist for Demo and then Hellcaller for Destruction. Even in AoE, you had pretty much the same winners again. Now, we start on the right foot with Affliction because Affliction, as predicted, started out with Soul Harvester being the sole played hero talent. So again, it's respecting what we thought. When we move over to demo, we were thinking about Diabolist, 95% in the raid, 95% in Mythic Plus. So again, we are respecting the predictions. The last one was Destruction, where Hellcaller was slightly above Diabolist and when in, in, in AoE, Hellcaller was ahead 
of Diabolist. So the, the, the suggestion was we might have a split. We might have an L color single target Diabolist uh, AOE Mythic Plus kind of split for destruction. Now, when you move over to destruction, it's 96% Diabolist in Mythic Plus and 99% Diabolist in the raid. So no, there was no split whatsoever. Turns out Diabolist is actually being used pretty much in any situation for destruction. The last of the classes, unfortunately, wasn't that exciting because when it came to Arms and Fury, it was just Slayer. At least there was some option in Mythic Plus, in AoE, because while Slayer was vastly overperforming the other two in single target, in AoE, in AoE, at least for Fury, Thane, Mountain Thane, was easily beating Slayer. So that's what we're expecting based on the actual results rather than just simulations. So when you move over to Warrior, you see Arms playing Slayer in 99% of the results in the raid in single target. When it comes to AoE, Colossus gets to 40%. So it is quite closer. So that is at least a good split. Yes, Slayer overall is still more popular and winning, but there is a good a good option for Colossus. Now, for Fury, on the other hand, in Mythic Plus, you have 99% of Slayer. In the raid, you have 100% of Slayer. So the whole the, the, the whole thing about Mountain Tain out damaging the Slayer build in Mythic Plus did not actually turn out to matter whatsoever. It is still just exclusively played as Slayer when it comes to Fury Warrior. And then the final one down the list of Warrior would have been Prot. Prot was expected to have Mountain Tain be the, the default one, especially in Mythic Plus, because of the damage that Mountain Tain can dish out in Mythic Plus. Although nowadays, if we look at the actual you know results, Mountain Tain is not you know that great compared to other tanks, but compared to the option within Protection Warrior, it was doing very well. And you do see in Mythic Plus 98% of Mountain Tains lowering a little bit in the raid over Colossus, but still a, a quite obvious advantage for Mountain Tain as a whole. So when when we look at all of the specs altogether, we can start discarding a few of the options for being terrible in terms of variety, in terms of options. So we have all of Death Knight, we have all of Demon Hunter, as well as all of the Hunters, the Mages, the Monks, as well as the Rogues, as well as the Warlocks for practically only using one hero talent in 95% plus of the situations, both in the Raid and in Mythic Plus. So they are just a one hero talent class. Now, for the diversity, we have some diversity in Warrior, where we have arms at the very least having some split when it comes to Mythic Plus between Slayer and Colossus. Then, while Enhancement and Restoration Shaman are both a one hero talent uh, spec, at least Elemental has a split playing Farseer in the raid and then having a, an 85-15 split of Stormbringer in Mythic Plus. So you have two viable hero talents in the two different activities. While Holy and Ret for Paladin and Shadow and Discipline for Priest are a one hero talent spec, only playing Herald of the Sun for Paladin, only playing Void Weaver for Discipline and Archon for Shadow Priest, one of their specs, in this case Prot Paladin, having a 63-37 split in favor of Templar in Mythic Plus, as well as Holy Priest having a 60-40 split for Oracle in Mythic Plus and then everyone playing Archon in the raid. That is some diversity there. We then finish up with our more diverse classes because Devastation isn't diverse whatsoever. They have a one hero talent played every time, but Preservation does have a full split. Everyone playing Flame Shaper in the raid, everyone playing Chrono Warden in Mythic Plus. And then Augmentation has an even closer split because you have a 50 50 of choice in Mythic Plus and a 70 30 choice in the raid. So very diverse there. But gets outdone by Druid. At the moment, the most diverse of classes when it comes to the options of hero talents because you have 
while Keeper of the Grove is dominating in the raid for balance, you have a 70-30 split in Mythic Plus for their hero talents. When it comes to Feral Druid, you have a split. Druid of the Claw played in Mythic Plus with Wild Stalker played more in the raid. And then you also have Guardian playing Elune's Chosen exclusively in Mythic Plus, but then playing more Druid of the Claw in the raid. And lastly, you have Ersto Druid playing more Keeper of the Grove in the raid and then slightly more Wild Stalker in Mythic Plus. So overall, if we had to pick after this entire list, the currently most diverse and viable sets of hero talents for each and every spec in the classes, the winners would be Druid and Evoker. Followed by Paladin and Priest and then Shaman and then Warrior and then pretty much all of the other ones without really much of any diversity at all in their hero talents. So for now, this is a quite interesting recap to have because in a few weeks the anniversary patch will hit which will also have quite a lot of balance tuning for quite a lot of these hero talents. So now that we have the snapshot of how much these hero talents are being played, we will then see how much the balance tuning will affect the popularity of these hero talents. But for now, this was the outlook on the play rate of all of these hero talents. So with this, out of the way on this Sunday, we can now leave each other. Thanks, of course, as usual, for having watched the, the video, as well as supporting in completely free ways, like liking and commenting down below, as well as subscribing to the channel itself. Now, with these things out of the way, thank you guys again for watching. See you guys tomorrow. And in the meantime, well, they said today we would have gotten to about 16 degrees. We are six degrees above what was promised. I'm not too happy about it.